Yes, summer has come and gone, but that's not a bad thing. That means that fall is here, and one of the best bites of the entire fishing season is right around the corner here in the great state of Wisconsin. So in this video, I am going to talk to you guys about the top three techniques to go out this fall and put more big walleyes in the boat. Now, these are not just my techniques. These are techniques that I have learned from pro walleye fisherman Max Wilson, my friend Cody, my friend Ben Royce, Jason Drua, a lot of different guys who have been walleye fishing for big walleyes their entire lives. So they have shared that information with me, and today I am going to share that with you. So stay tuned, we're gonna jump right in. Let's jump right in and talk about our first bait, our first presentation that we like to use for walleyes in the fall. Now, this one, you probably know it's a, it's a very widely used technique for walleyes, but what I'm using today is a power bait Maxent flat nose jerk shad. Now, some people might think that a five inch bait is too big for walleyes, but when you're doing reaction bites like this, I can assure you it's not. They will eat a very large bait. We have a Kalen's Google Eye Jig and Tom Boley turned me on to these. These Kalen's Google Eye Jigs are awesome. They work very well. And basically all you're gonna do is you're gonna take that jerk nose shad, you're gonna thread it up onto your hook like so. So you get to the proper positioning and you're gonna slide that shad up on the hook and it's going to look something like that. Now, what you're gonna do when you use this bait, it's a little bit different in the fall. Uh, they like a little bit of a more gliding action versus that rip and pop that you normally use in the summer to get that reaction strike. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna cast it out, you're gonna let it fall to the bottom on a semi-slack line, and then once you reach the bottom, you're gonna give it a pop. And I'd say it's about you know a two foot pop, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold. So you're gonna pop, you're gonna hold your rod tip, upwards probably I would say at an 11 o'clock position. So what happens when you do that pop is that bait is actually gonna go up and then when you hold it's gonna glide down to the bottom. Now on that glide what's gonna happen is those fish are gonna follow that bait and they're gonna pin it down to the bottom. So when you go to do your next pop you're actually going to be setting the hook into the fish's mouth. Now this is a deadly technique because it imitates a dying bait fish. So whether you're on the Bay of Green Bay or you're up north in northern Wisconsin or Minnesota, in the fall you tend to have more bait fish die off as the water temperatures start to cool and they become very easy targets for hungry walleyes. So using some sort of a jerk minnow, and you don't have to use a you know max sense, you can use a Kalen's jerk minnow in the four inch. There's a lot of different options. Gulp makes a great minnow. Um, but that profile and that technique of that pop and glide is a very, very solid fish catching technique in the fall for big walleyes. Now you're gonna hear me say this throughout the video very often. The key to working these baits correctly is having the right setup. The one that I'm gonna use, you're gonna hear me say over and over again, is gonna be medium, medium, medium. So you want a medium rod because it has enough backbone for you to work that bait properly, but it's sensitive enough that when you hook that fish, they're not going to shake the hook. So having a rod like a serpent medium extra fast is going to help you work this bait much more effectively. Now there's one exception in these trio of baits that I'm going to show you, and we'll talk about which rod that I like for that one when we get to it. Okay, moving on to the number two bait in our lineup for big fall walleyes. Now during the fall, the feed bag is certainly being turned on. These fish are going to eat as much as they can before winter to build up a good fat and protein base before they go into that lethargic period where they're not going to eat as much throughout the winter. Now, the way to fish during this time is you want to fish as efficiently as you can, meaning as many casts, as many shots at getting fish as possible because they're feeding so rapidly. So that is where techniques that are fast and erratic can really come in and catch you big fish by triggering that reaction strike. So when you're doing that, the two baits that I really like to use, you can see here, these are a Shiver Minnow by Moonshine Lures, and then you have a Jigging Wrap by Rapala. Now both of these are great baits for any, really all the way through summer and in fall, but in fall they're really effective because you can work them very quickly and cover a lot of water to find fish. One of the things that I think discourages anglers when fall fishing comes around is you hear this fall feed bag, fall feed bag, but there is no fall feed bag unless you find the fish. And what happens during that water temperature change is fish tend to migrate. So you're going to have a lot of fish cooped up in one area in a body of water and the rest of that body of water is gonna be pretty void of fish activity. So by going around and chucking these baits around and ripping them around, 
you are going to be able to cover water quickly and figure out exactly where those fish are living. Now, it just depends on the body of water. Sometimes later in the fall, fish will tuck into weeds, but generally what you're going to see is fish are going to relate to some sort of a deeper structure, meaning they're gonna look for a sharp bluff wall, or they're going to look for some kind of a rock hump that has deep, deeper edges on the sides, and they're gonna start moving towards those wintering haunts. Covering water with this technique right here is super deadly. Now, when you're fishing for walleyes, I've learned that a blue chrome and a purple uh, or a gold are very, very effective fall techniques. And again, throughout the summer, these are just great colors no matter what. If you're going out and you're chasing fall walleyes, definitely you wanna have these in your repertoire. Again, both of them are great baits. They have a slightly different action. This has a little bit more of a sharper dart and this one's a little bit wider. Um, but either way, they both are going to catch you some nice walleyes in the fall. Now I talked before about the type of rod that I like to use, but the reel is also uh, you know, a big thing. So I like to use either a 3000 or a 2000. The 3000 is nice because you can snatch up a lot more line. So that way you're getting a little bit more line uptake when you're doing these ripping techniques and you're having to follow the bait back and rip. Uh, and also if you hook a big fish and it takes a run at the boat, having that, that speed and that larger size reel takes up more line. So that helps you as well. But same thing for that shiver technique or that uh, jigging wrap technique, you're gonna use a medium rod and that medium rod is gonna have that backbone to continue to rip that bait up off the bottom. And then again, when you go to rip, you're gonna set the hook into that fish and you wanna have that backbone in the spine of that rod to make sure that that fish gets hooked. Walleyes have really bony mouths. So those small hooks, you really gotta drive them home to get them you know, deep into their jaw, especially when you're talking you know, 28 to 32 inch walleyes out on the Green Bay. The right rod, the right reel will give you the right setup. Last but not least, let's jump into number three on our list. Number three on our list is a hair jig. Now you can get hair jigs from a lot of different places, but I have found some folks here in Wisconsin on the Fly Tackle LLC, they make some incredible hair jigs and they will make them custom to your liking. So I've worked with them on a couple of different hair jig designs already and they have absolutely knocked them out of the park. Uh, this one here, this last spring on Green Bay, I actually caught my 30 inch walleye on, um, was super cool, caught it on live scope. But a hair jig is a very, very deadly technique, and it's a very old technique. Um, but in the last couple of years, we've seen the hair jig make a big resurgence in the fishing world. And the hair jig is such a versatile bait. It can be fished in so many conditions, but it really shines on those really nasty, cold, just horrible conditions when that water temperature really starts to drop. That is when the hair jig is going to get you your bites. So. Obviously, it depends on you know the body of water and what kind of color you're gonna use. Um, this blue and white is really good to imitate bait fish, um, but sometimes, depending on that clarity, you might need something like a purple green or a black and purple. Um, it really just depends on the body of water that you are fishing, but that's the beautiful thing about on-the-fly tackle is they can custom make it to whatever your liking is. Now, depending on how you are fishing a hair jig, kind of depends on the type of rod you're going to use with it. So for me personally, I really like a medium light 7.2, um, unless I'm going to a really heavy hair jig. But if I'm going up to, you know, 3 8 ounce, I will use that 7.2. It allows me to get a lot of feel. And when those walleyes are finicky and they pick up that bait, you want to be able to feel that pickup before they feel the tension on the line. And having that softer tip with that softer rod is definitely going to help you in that situation. Another thing that I wanna point out that you'll see on most of these is that I have stinger hooks. And these stinger hooks are going to help you again when those walleyes get really finicky. Stinger hooks are there to ensure a hookup if they short strike the bait. So if you have a minnow on this hook or something like that, it's gonna go back and that stinger hook right here in the back is going to hook up whenever they miss that main hook. And I cannot tell you how many times I've been out with Max Wilson or with Cody and we have been fishing and that stinger hook basically saved the day. So. Hair jigs are absolutely a staple in walleye fishing and even more so in the fall as the water temps cool, hair jigs can become a very, very productive tool on any body of water throughout the entire Midwest. Well guys, that is a wrap for today's video. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you like the tips in this video, go down below and drop me a comment and let me know. Also, if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button and also hit that notifications bell, guys. That way you can get notified every time we post right here on the PC Fun YouTube channel. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. And we will see you guys on the next one.